Hey everybody, Eric here. And today I'm gonna to need your help picking out an image that I'm gonna use for my 2024 scale figure. So I don't always do this. I've got a few scale figures here behind me from the past years, but I do like to refresh it um, at least every couple of years, if not every year. So for those that haven't made their own scale figure, uh, it's a good skill to learn how to do, not just the importance of why we use scale figures, but of course, picking the right image for a scale figure, tracing a scale figure, making a component, coloring, all those things. It's just a great way to reinforce your basic SketchUp fundamental knowledge. So let's go ahead and do mine now. I've got a few guys here. This is uh, me from 2018. I don't know if it looks uh, like me or not. This is me from 2021. This is me from 2023. So again, I'm skipping a few years, but I'm going to want one to take the place of one that represents me this year. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that. That question mark was just my placeholder. Before I sort of look at the images that I have to choose from, let's take a look at what I, the decisions that I made in the past. So number one, my very first scale fig here, you can see a couple things. Number one is I didn't have help taking the photo. So I went and took a picture of myself in the mirror. So I included the phone in the picture. Second thing is you'll notice that I put my foot behind me. And so when you have your camera up high and you're looking down at your feet, you're going to see that a foot behind you is going to look higher in perspective because that's how it works in a photograph. Now, in this case, it almost looks like it's floating though when it's a scale figure and it is floating because your foot is smaller and therefore um, backwards. Now, I tried to remedy this here in 2021. I don't know why I wasn't wearing shoes that day, but I wasn't. And so here I am. I did make sure that my feet were sort of equal with each other. One was not in front and not behind. The only thing is, is when you spread your feet out this far, watch what happens when you rotate your feet in your shadow kind of becomes disconnected. So eh, may or may not be something that I care about. So I went ahead and tried to learn to le use the lessons learned um, from 2018 and 2021. And I made one here with myself where I've got my feet together, but they're not super far apart. And you can see, so when I move, the shadow sort of stays pretty close to my feet and it looks like I'm standing on the ground, even though it looks like I'm floating because the photo was taken from a little bit higher up. But hey, you know what? Doing my best here. So one thing that you can see here is all my poses. I like to put my hands in my pockets. Does that make the best scale figure? I'm not sure. Let's see what we've got now to work with for my 2024 version. So I grabbed some photos here. Let me see if I've got those open. Here I am, uh, hands not in the pockets. If you're gonna take a great photo, first of all, I wanna point out, number one, maybe move some furniture. In this case, you can see I've got a chair blocking my feet. Now that's probably okay. I can probably guess at what that looks like. Um, number two, I've got the camera placed on a counter. So you can see it's right about my waist level. So that's good because it's gonna reduce sort of that looking down onto my feet that you would see if it was taken at eye level looking down. Of course, you get that perspective distortion. This is going to level my feet out a little bit. Thumbs up. I don't know. Maybe not the best pose. Let's do something a little bit more energetic. Well, maybe not that energetic. Uh, so this one's a little bit more dynamic. You can see foot in the air. Now, when would I use this in real life? If I'm going to use a scale figure in a project, I probably want to have them doing something. So me doing the jig or me doing maybe stepping up onto a wall or climbing something, maybe that would be useful. Maybe not. So again, trying to get my hands out of my pockets. Here's my Superman pose on the waist. Um, a little static. I don't know. Again, now what if I still go for a walk here? I'm going to walk like an Egyptian. I don't know who walks like this. I was trying to do a walking pose. It is a little bit. It's not me standing still with my hands in my pockets. So again, there I am with my hands in my pockets. And then the last one I did is I thought, you know, I've never made a scale figure sitting down. So I'm going to take a picture sitting down. So here, to keep this show rolling, I'm going to go with that one. Let's go with sitting down. So let's take this image here, pop over to SketchUp, and bring that in. And let's see, I'm going to drag that and scale it up. Now, I like to draw flat on the ground. So I'm going to go ahead and place that flat on the ground. One thing I'm also going to do is make a group. I'm going to start by making this a group. And I'm going to scale, I already know from checking my scale figure over here that my head is about 10 inches tall. So I'm just gonna come over here, grab my chin, go to the top of my hat, I'm gonna type in 10 inches, and there we go. Now I'm drawing at sort of one-to-one -one scale. Now I'm going to set my camera to parallel projection because I wanna be looking straight down. Then I wanna go up to camera, standard views, and top. 
So I'm looking sort of straight down. Next thing I'm gonna do is open up my styles and I'm gonna come over here to edit and to face style and to x-ray. Now I have a keyboard shortcut for that, so I'm not gonna do that again. Just showing you that um, I'm gonna go ahead and turn this on to x-ray. And the reason for that is because it's gonna make it easier for me to trace. Now I'm ready to trace. One last step is I'm gonna place this onto its own tag. And the reason why I'm gonna place my image onto my own tag is just because it's easier than freezing it. You'll see in a second. So now if I want to, I can just turn that on and off. And that's just, I can see my progress as I go. So this is where I get to kind of choose. What do I want to use? I can use the line tool and then I can kind of see what's a straight line. And then of course it's going to try to inference. So I don't know if my arm is that straight. I could come over here and use the arc tool and say, well, there's a little bit of a curve there. It's kind of a slow way to do it. Uh, personally, I think, um, I actually like to use the freehand tool when I draw. So I have, you can't see it, but I actually have a tablet display. So I'm gonna switch over to my little handy dandy pen. Of course, if you don't have this, you can freehand with a mouse. Freehand tool is over here, looks like a squiggly line. You can still freehand with your mouse. It's pretty good. It's not quite as good as when you work with a tablet, but um, if you do have a, a pen display, then definitely use the tools that you have. So I'm gonna start with just the outer perimeter. So I'm gonna ignore all these inner lines like shoelaces and facial, facial features and clothes and stuff. I just wanna start with kind of a pretty broad brush stroke of grabbing just, almost as if I was doing a silhouette of just the exterior. So let's turn that off and see how my profile looks. You can see there's no face in there, so that's okay. I'm just gonna go ahead and close it. So sometimes there's a little air gap and I don't know where one might be, but you can see just by kind of closing the line here. The other thing of course I can do is um, change the color of my background, but I like my white background, so I'm gonna leave it. Somewhere in here I must have, there it is, I overlapped an edge. So I just need to cut that out. And then when I go to close this, that should give me basically my whole body. So I can erase those little extras, extra bits. So there we go, there's my profile. Now let's go ahead and remove my arm bits. So I'm gonna go ahead and switch to the freehand tool. Same thing, come in here, grab maybe some folds of the clothes a little bit, and that's it, that one's done. And lastly, that one's done. So I'm gonna get rid of those, I don't need those right there. And then here, it might be easier to switch to the line tool instead of using the freehand. I'm okay just doing straight sleeves like that. This is where I may also want to switch to the arc tool. You know, again, I'm combining methods. You don't have to do freehand the whole time just because I did it that for a little bit. You know, it may actually make sense to have a little bit more accuracy by bringing in a different tool. And the same thing here, I might want to do an arc on the chin or I might want to do a um, freehand here. I'm not sure. It doesn't really matter. Again, whatever works for your particular scale figure. And I'm going to just draw a straight line and let's see, do I want to cut both ears off? I'm not sure. Sometimes I just cut one ear off and not the other. I might want to cut both of them off in this case. And lastly, I need to actually draw round out. I'm going to freehand this part. I'm going to do my cap. Try not to look at the, my face as I'm drawing it. I'm not sure what that facial expression is. Probably just hold still for the camera. I'm just going to speed this part up just a little bit because I know it's running a bit long. So I'm going to use the same thing that I've been doing, just kind of maybe fast forward. Put some details in here, close everything up, make sure everything looks good. Make sure to erase any straight lines that I've got so that those don't show up. If I want to put some folds in or if I want to put some details on the shoes, I can do that. And that's it. Now we're ready to put some color on it. So I'm going to turn this off and I'm going to, actually, I'm not going to turn that off. I'm going to turn my x-ray mode off. And I'm going to move this off to the side. And the reason why is because I can actually sample using the paint bucket tool from myself. So sample, maybe grab a skin color. That's not the right color, that's okay. I can adjust it later, that's a little dark. So I might just adjust this now. That's like me when I'm coming back from vacation. And there we go. Let's go ahead and try sampling that jean color, see if I can pick up a nice color of jeans and sample my shirt color. Again, I don't have to use the color that I'm wearing here. I can use any color that I want, but um, I can change it and be more creative. Okay, and then we'll sample my hat, get something like, maybe that's too dark, so we'll just lighten it up a little bit. 
and we'll go with that for now. Okay, so that looks a little bit like me. Now I'm gonna turn it into a component. So I'm gonna select everything. I'm going to group it just for now and flip it up 90 degrees so that he's sitting straight up. Make that a component, right click it. It's gonna ask me, first of all, what do you wanna call it? I'm calling this Eric Scale Fig 2024. And I'm going to say always face camera and I'm gonna say set the component axis. I want to make sure that the blue is up and the red is over. If I'm, if you have trouble getting this to line up at all, so sometimes it may help you to orient the orient the the view in elevation style. So when you're kind of looking straight at it, then you can go ahead and get just sort of a better way to do that. So I'm going to say make a component, always face camera. Again, I'm just going to say Eric, shorten that to 2024, and set the component axis. I want it in the middle and I want it making sure that blue is up and red is straight across. That way, when I turn, you can see that it's pivoting on that center point. And if I turn my shadows back on, you can see I'm floating in the air here, but that's okay because I have a stool that I'm gonna put myself on. So I don't need that anymore. I'm gonna turn that off and I'm gonna place myself right over here on the stool. And let's see here if that worked. And let's make a component and place myself right there with right in line with myself. Now, just to match the skin color, I matched the one from the from before, but I'm going to select all um, on the same material and I'm going to grab that one and I'm going to repaste it. And that way that same material is basically the same for each of my scale figs. So there we go. So that's it, that's the process. Again, I'm gonna recap shortly here. Make sure you've got a good image to work with. Think about where the camera is taken, picture is taken from up high, center, down low. Think about where your foot placement is, what your pose is, what you're wearing. If that matters, you can always change it later. And of course, lastly, you know, use the tools at your disposal. If you don't have a tablet, you can always do it on iPad or you can do it using um, extensions. You can also use it using, do it using native tools. So if you haven't made your own scale figure yet, it's 2024, it's, we're a few months in, get in there, go make yours and um, share it with us. Add it to the 3D Warehouse. I'm gonna add mine here right after this video. I'll add it to 3D Warehouse, put it in the description below. You can go download any of me from 2018 to today. So thanks for watching. Don't forget to give us that thumbs up if you learned something new. If you haven't already subscribed so you can get weekly videos and announcements and what's going on, especially with live streams. And with that, I'm going to thank you and I will see you next time.